So hi there all, and thank you very much for joining us for what is now episode number 17 of Mantel Associates Network. Um, I'm glad to be joined today by Peter Vorso, who is the CEO of Asteril. Um, Asteril are a growing organization um, in the pharmaceutical space, which are based in Sweden and were actually uh, acquired back in 2003 by um, Fuji Chemicals and have been growing and growing and growing since that time. So, Peter, it is absolutely great to, to have you on here. Thank you so much for joining us. And I guess it would, it would be great for, for you to kind of talk us through a little bit on, um, on Asteril, what the company does um, and what makes the business unique. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, the, uh, the the business is uh, based around nutraceuticals and, uh, and an algae called uh, Hematococcus pluvialis, which is the base for astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is a nutraceutical where that we sell in uh, different uh, different areas in in the, the retail environment, but also in business to business where you put it in different ingredients. Uh, we also have a pharma side, uh, which is uh, uh, smaller here in, in Europe, but much bigger in, in Japan. And uh, what the company has been doing for the last uh, couple of years, for the last 10 years, is actually to, uh, to really you know, develop the market around this ingredient, which is, has very strong antioxidative uh, properties both in terms of uh, anti-inflammatory, but also in terms of uh, uh, preventing different uh, conditions like heart, uh, heart uh, diseases, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we have in Sweden uh, a, a production site where we grow the, the algae. Uh, we have also uh, the sales department in the Swedish uh, in Sweden. And we are all based around the Stockholm area. So, so this product is coming from the archipelago of Stockholm, actually, mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, this algae that we are uh, producing. Uh, the, uh, what is uh, nice about this is that uh, algae and, and that kind of ingredients are you know, growing in interest all over the world. Just the, also because it is, it's very environmentally friendly, sustainable, but it's also uh, have a very, very good health benefits. And uh, that is what we are working with to expand the market as it is uh, right now. And what we are doing also here in, uh, in Sweden is that we are, also, we are responsible for the European operation, but we are also responsible actually for the Chinese operation. So we are actually expanding a lot in China as it is right now. Wow. So the... um, yeah, sorry. You at the moment, you've got obviously you've got everything which is which is going on in Sweden. Then you've got the operations which are growing in China. You've got the operations in Japan as well. Um, and the business is obviously sitting at the forefront of life changing um, illnesses for human beings and helping them overcome them. Um, talk me through really um, life since kind of COVID-19, being a CEO, knowing that you've got all of those things that are huge priorities and all of those operations to manage. Um, and, and, and really kind of how you've managed all of that. Okay, uh, a big question, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think, uh, it, yeah, I think uh, when it comes to the COVID, so uh, uh, we, were, we were kind of lucky because uh, I can, if I start with the Chinese operation there, uh, we uh, actually had the opportunity to visit China a couple of times bef just before the COVID or the pandem pandemic started, which meant that we had a base in terms of the contacts and so on. So, so that has been very beneficial. But what has happened is that we have, of course, gone from being quite, uh, I would say, not so advanced when it comes to the the using Teams and Zoom and, and so <laughs> on to be uh, super professionals. Yeah. Uh, so we have done that uh, uh, frequently. Uh, and we have also, and uh, I've also implemented that. So we have much more frequent uh, updates nowadays, both from information for the whole staff, but also the management team. We actually have what we call the daily checkup, which is only 10 minutes that we do every day. 
just to keep people, you know, close to you and also. And the same thing is actually with China. We do two China updates every week. So, uh, which means that we have probably more contacts with China than we would have uh, <laughs> if it, it wasn't for COVID, to be yeah. honest, because it has been very natural to have these kind of meetings. So, so that has been good. And then uh, I think in terms of keeping the, the staff motivated to keep them healthy and, and, and so on, uh, I think it has been very important to try to do different activities despite the COVID. So we, we've had, uh, for instance, a, a Christmas party where we had that online. Wow. Uh, so we we had we had different uh, quiz and, and and so on <laughs> in order to engage people and and so on. so so that is one you know one of many things that we have done. We have also started a number of competitions, like since we are working with both health and sustainability. Uh, I think it is extremely important that we, uh, uh, what do you call it, live as you uh, teach or teach, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so what? Uh, yeah, so what? What has been very important then is so, so we have had uh, step competitions, for instance. So, so we we check, you know, how many steps you do per day, and so Love that. so that has been, yeah. What else? Uh, uh, and we have uh, also when the, the 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 COVID situation was better. It's quite bad now in Sweden, and it's getting actually worse uh, uh, as we as we are right now. And as you know, I mean, we have been not been traveling. Uh, you know, very very little traveling. In most cases, no traveling at all. And uh, what we have done there is to, uh, uh, when it has been a little bit better, to have some activities outdoor. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so you meet your colleagues outdoor. So we have done that as well, where we, uh, you know, have a barbecue outdoor and where we have it COVID secured and safe. Lovely. What yeah. I've loved so about it's a combination everything. of everything. What I've loved about everything that you've said, it, it really is a combination of everything. What I love um, about you said, um, it is really in line with the motivation aspect, making sure to keep the team engaged, the team together, if anything, um, communicating more with China than, than you had even before COVID-19, which is brilliant. Um, that is one challenge which a lot of business leaders have faced during this is, is, is how to keep staff motivated. What other challenges have, have you faced as a CEO of Astoreal during this incredible time and, and how have you adapted to some of these challenges? So uh, I think uh, uh, when you when you uh, uh, look at the, for instance, our Chinese operation, it is of course a, a major disadvantage uh, that we cannot go there and travel and meet. Uh, you know, the, so we have actually hi hired new people in China without meeting them in person. I've only met them via Teams, uh, and that is of course a challenge. Mm. Uh, and it is. What you miss when you don't meet people, that is, of course, you, you miss all these, uh, how shall I say, soft, soft things that go, it's going on in the corridors or in, mm. uh, you know, uh, to, 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 uh, to pick that up. You, you miss that because you don't see what people have, uh, how, how they really feel. And uh, in order to, uh, to uh, try to compensate for that, that is, of course, to have much more uh, or much closer contacts with your team members. As I mentioned, one thing that is to have these daily up, uh, updates. Uh, and I follow up uh, much more closely today than I did before, because you need to be close to your, uh, to your direct reports, but also to the rest of the, the personnel. That is, you know, one thing. I think another thing that we have seen now in, in with the COVID situation is that actually new businesses, new leads, has been a little bit on a standstill or it is, you know, a lot of customers, they are waiting or not waiting, but they, they don't dare to take the risk to yeah. jump into something totally new or with a new supplier and so on. So they are, they work uh, somewhat in, the, in, in with the way that it has been before. Uh, uh, so, so, in, so they have worked with old, uh, you know, old suppliers, et cetera, et cetera. That has been a disadvantage that you cannot attract these new businesses in, in the same way as you could before, I think. 100%. It has been a 
yeah. On the other hand, that has been then, uh, of course, an, ad, uh, an advantage for the, you know, the business where you have it up and running, uh, because then they stick to you, right? So, <laughs> so, so that was, yeah. Absolutely. I was going to yeah. say um, as well, I mean, speaking of new business, selling the organization, getting out onto the market, um, you spoke brilliantly at the start, explaining exactly what, what Astoril does uh, as an organization. All of it seems fairly unique and complex to, to me. But if you were to, to pinpoint what makes Astoril unique and how you really kind of differentiate yourselves on the market, what would that be? I think uh, uh, that we come with this, uh, you know, fantastic natural resource that we are producing uh, in a, you know, sustainable, sustainable way. It's is something that is unique and fantastic. It has uh, fantastic properties. This this ingredient and this molecule. So so it is something that we are really proud of, and th that we see also is something that is uh, is really appreciated by the customers. That you have this unique quality and also this unique heritage. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, I would say, and of course, I mean, we need to uh, be on our toes. We are not alone. You have a number of different, different competitors out there. Uh, so uh, we need always to to improve, to develop, and to be, you know, uh, best in class. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is something we are trying to work at all the time. Huh? Incredible. And with everything which is going on, I guess, um, would you say the the Right now, this past year, which has just been a blur, would you say that, that right now is, is your most challenging time ever as a leader, as a CEO of an organization? And do you feel that the world is challenging leaders and leadership more than ever? Yes, I think so. I think so. Uh, I think... Uh, 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 I, I think uh, yes and no, uh, and I would say <laughs> uh, I think uh, yes in terms of it's extremely difficult to to keep uh, you know everyone uh, healthy and in good spirit during these very challenging times. Mm -hmm. At the si same time, I think you uh, you avoid some of the frictions that you usually have in an organization since people are not meeting that much. Huh? <laughs> It's, it's true yeah. yeah you know so so from from that perspective it is uh, it is uh, maybe somewhat easier in that that, that mm. respect but in in but I, I would say in terms of you know the overall situation it is uh, extremely challenging and and uh, it is also you know really challenging to have your your whole team uh, with you that way you 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 you, uh, you look at the future in in a bright way because it's, it's i mean it's changing all the time right yeah and uh, and um, it has been uh, very frustrating a number of times because uh, you know and i think it is the same for everyone that okay now we see that this is it's coming. It's uh, uh, or uh, now things are starting to loosen up here. We see that the, the pandemic is going down and we it's going back to normal. And then suddenly you have a, another wave, or uh, or or uh, you see that the, the the pandemic is increasing, which puts uh, you know uh, lockdowns and the closes border and yeah. 100%. You had mentioned as well um, about um, about some of the really positive changes that you've made since being um, since all, all of this had begun in terms of how you're dealing with the team, more more meetings and things like that. Something else which um, I've come across when speaking with other people on the podcast um, is that when you're a smaller organisation, 40 employees or so, um, as you guys are, a lot of the creativity really comes and the spark really comes and the energy comes from being in a room with those people and bouncing ideas off of each other. And of course, through doing the meetings that you've set up and and, and Zoom calls and, and conversations, that is as close as you're gonna get in the best way. Um, I guess what what I'm trying to do is put a positive spin on, on everything and the changes that you've made internally into Astoril. But in terms of changing externally, what are some of the most exciting changes that, that you see coming 
in the pharmaceutical space as a whole. Um, yeah. I, I think uh, I think uh, one thing that uh, this uh, pandemic has really contributed to that is of course that everyone is now professional when it comes to using uh, you know digital tools to communicate, and I think uh, uh, what we have seen is that we have had uh, uh, you know both exhibitions and, uh, and congresses where we have used then of course uh, digital tools instead of meeting in person, and that has actually been. Uh, I would say a couple of these events have been very productive, even wow. though you uh, because you uh, you have uh, 30 minutes, you uh, people are connecting that you know are really interested, and uh, and you you have a totally different output from these events than than maybe you, you stand in a in a booth at an exhibition, <laughs> you meet some people, you have you know, so so there has been a, from that perspective, I think it has been a, you know really good, and I think that you will see that a change in the future. Uh, or after this pandemic, where you will use this tool much more. Uh, I'm not saying it will replace everything, because it will not, but it will replace some of it and be a complement to, uh, you know, the other, other activities you can do. And I think that is something that this pandemic has really contributed to. Brilliant. You had yeah. um, mentioned so, as well uh, earlier on about the fact that business development has been a lot harder in terms of generating new sales, spring on new accounts, which is common theme everywhere across the globe um, in pretty much every industry. Yep. Um, something that someone else had said to me um, who had the exact same challenges that you'd had, which is not uncommon, is that actually by, by not having the business development and the sales for uh, not having a lot of, of new business coming their way, it had, it had given them the opportunity to reevaluate their current accounts and the businesses that, that they were working with and improve the services that they had and the quality of the service that they were giving to, to accounts that were so important to them. Um, have you done that as well at Asteril? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, I think uh, one thing that you realize when, when you have this pandemic is, of course, that uh, since you're not traveling anymore, you free up time to do other things. Uh, and uh, you, uh, I mean, uh, we took China, for example. I mean, it takes, uh, you know, one full day to go there, one full day to go uh, go back from, <laughs> from China. I mean, it's two whole days. And, yeah. that, uh, and uh, so, so I think what, and that time has been used now to really consolidate, to analyze, to really look in to you know the different accounts uh, you know are they profitable or are they not profitable how can we make it you know how can we develop the service here in a better way and and so on so yes i think that has uh, been a time to reflect and it has been a time to also to uh, uh, how should i say uh, stop and uh, uh, and do some proper analysis before you run uh, you know yeah yeah so, so, 100%. so yeah and i think that has been more um, more more present and more uh, something that you do more now than than you did before because you know, you somewhere you have more time brilliant leadership um and uh it is something which i'm definitely still still learning um and you've been in leadership positions for many many years now um what are the secrets to to good leadership and i guess it would be great if you could um, convert that into not only Asteril but other businesses that you've worked in as well. Uh, so I, I think uh, what is a good leadership for me that is uh, uh, a person that is uh, 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 inspirational, that is someone that can really gather uh, uh, the teams in a in a in a positive way, that can you know really uh, show. Uh, you know, a vision uh, that it can be uh, downgraded or not downgraded, but uh, break broken down to pieces so everyone knows what to do and, and so on. Uh, it is someone with a great uh, ability to motivate people, uh, which means that you're not micromanaging, but you are really uh, looking at... at um, how you can you know develop people in the best possible way 
it should also be a person that is uh, is uh, challenging you so you uh, actually can test your uh, uh, capabilities and uh, and so on so you develop because i think to make sure that people develop is something that is extremely important when you work with the leadership so you you have a learning organization mm. Uh, because the world is changing and so on. And I think uh, what is also is extremely important, that is that you're predictable in terms of, so you're not a moody uh, manager. I've had some uh, mood managers <laughs> throughout my, my career. And, and I think, uh, I think uh, it, it is important that you create uh, an environment where people feel, you know, uh, they are not uh, afraid of doing mistakes, but you should learn from the you know from the mistakes and it should be an environment where people can develop and grow and, and so on and but at the same time the leader should be there as a you know predictable but also in terms of demanding i mean that can be uh, and you know and one thing that i think is um, uh, uh, that you're not uh, full of uh, prestige and so on, that you're down to earth i think that is really uh, a good, good characteristics of a, a good boss. Someone that is, you know, down to earth with, with a, a big portion of humor as well. I think that it's not bad at all. Love that. I like what you said about the um, about the moody aspect. And it, everything you said was was in line with with what I've heard, which is it's about serving the people. Um, serving the people who you're working with and, and you mentioned trying to find ways to develop them, trying to find ways to, to ensure that they're, they're pushing. But I, I like that you said about, um, I've never heard the answer about the moody part and it is true because you need people to feel secure and feel confident and not feel that one day they're going to come in and that person's going to be aggressive. Next to the guy. So I guess a question for me to you is if times are stressful and if business is, is, is difficult as it is right now, um, one hundred percent from sales and, and business development. How do you go about um, as a leader at Astoril and in, in other positions, ensuring that you maintain that level? Uh, I, I think uh, uh, one thing that I didn't mention here as a great great leader. I think one other thing that is actually to uh, uh, someone said that I think it was uh, Jack Walsh. Uh, 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 Jack Welsh from GE said that uh, you, you should, could, uh, you sh a great leader is someone who can have a six billion dollar lawsuit, uh, but at the same time can can really focus on someone coming in and discussing the parking lot, right? So so <laughs> that you can, you know, you have bo both these aspects, and I, I think that is uh, uh, also connected to this with Moody that you are really can can you know go, go from. Uh, you know, uh, things that are very strategic, very big to, to smaller things and th that you can, you know, go up and down from that. And I think that is uh, also something that's extremely important in these times where when it is very stressful and, uh, uh, but uh, I mean, that you still need to be very, you know, down to earth and also can focus on the small things. No, I love that. Just being able to completely shut off and say that was then, that's something completely separate. We leave that and we focus on what's happening. That is a skill in itself, like a serious, yep. serious skill and difficult. Um, and I, I've loved all of your answers to, to everything. And I, I wanted to ask you one final question, um, which is what piece of advice would you give to other business leaders right now who are looking to, to optimize their response to the crisis and are looking to, to grow their organizations and keep positive? Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, I think this pandemic will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, over soon, uh, over in the, the way that we, we can start to meet again and so on. And I think uh, now it's the time to prepare uh, the organizations to really, you know, accelerate uh, when you're, uh, when you, um, when the pandemic is over, but also that it's a lot of great business out there right now. So uh, I think, you know, it's it's a little bit this mass psychosis as well. Uh, you know, if everyone is talking about how bad everything is, then it becomes bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, and if you stay positive and that you're trying to really accelerate, then other it will be the, like this uh, rings on the water. I mean, things are you know. Uh, 
uh, will 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 grow all, all over. And I, I truly believe that. Uh, uh, and I see that uh, once again, I mentioned China, but China has not been hit as hard as Europe, for instance, when it comes to this pandemic. And what you see, there is this spirit of uh, almost like business as usual, and they are very positive and, you know, growing the business. And, uh, and uh, here in Europe, maybe we have had a little bit more of a negative spiral. And uh, they have been uh, so. So I think we should learn from uh, from from the guys over over in, in uh, the big country in, in, in the East and, uh, and stay positive and uh, because that will, uh, it will come new times. And I think uh, the ones that have prepared in the best possible way will win, win the, the race. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm a huge believer personally in the law of attraction in you become what you think about and, and thinking positive and, um, and during, during everything, I think actually, Aside from COVID, in life, in business, in relationships, in everything, I think that's crucial because how you are with people is how they're normally going to be a reflection of you is what you see. And um, I think, again, if you're going for new sales, new business development, and you're always going in positive, always have that mindset, then eventually something's going to come. Whereas if you just completely shut off and go, no, this is a horrible time, we can't do it, then of course, nothing's going to happen. So Thank you so much for, for everything. Thank you so much for sharing everything in regards to your experience, how you've dealt with everything, leadership, Astoril. Um, Peter, it's, it has been an absolute pleasure. So thank you very much. And we will talk very soon. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Take, Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Right. We are done. So bear with me. I can stop video. There we go. Da hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very oh. much. Bear with me, I'll see what I've done there. Uh, do, 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 so I can do this. I am still, I'm, I'm 26, and everyone seems to tell me that, that this generation is good with technology. I am rubbish. I'm absolutely <laughs> rubbish. I mean, seriously bad. Um, that was awesome. Thank you so much. I, I, I really appreciate it. It was, it was brilliant. Do you know, what you said about the moody part, um, was brilliant because I can be like that a lot. I'm, I'm um, emotional with how I deal with business and emotional in every way, it, it, which is normally a positive when it comes to sales and business development. But it was a really that really struck home for me, and I think it will it will strike for a lot of people as well. I'm mean, I'm glad if I can contribute with something. <laughs> Fantastic! Thank you so yeah. much. Thank um, you very much. It was very nice meeting you, and uh, and uh, good luck with everything. And